late to the party as per usual because procrastination, baby. Yes. Anyway, so Martin Luther King Day was this past Monday and I wanted to talk about civil rights. Yeah. Especially during this controversial time in history. Let's talk about some civil rights. Anyway, no, actually I wanted to talk about Detroit Become Human. If you have not heard, Detroit Become Human is a video game that basically focuses on a future society of humanity where androids exist and they basically work as like your personal assistant. Now this is a game, all right? A wham and simile. <laughs> I'm joking! Uh, prostitutes. Oh my god. It's basically the purple light district. Detectives, all different kinds of things. I'm gonna get into that in a second. But if you go on YouTube and you were to type in Detroit Become Human, like video essay or explained or something like that, you'll come across a few videos like I did that talks about how Detroit Become Human is too on the nose and too obvious with its analogy to the civil rights movement, Jim Crow, things like that. On public transit, the robots are limited to standing storage compartments that just happen to be at the back of the bus, even though on the roof or under the seats would be more efficient in universe and more shocking and dehumanizing artistically. The androids are also marked with armbands and triangles, which is how the Nazis identified prisoners in their concentration camp. And to that I say, everyone's missing the point. Roll credits. <laughs> I'm gonna try to make this video short and not too long. Editor, we shall see how this goes. <laughs> But anyway, I don't agree with the idea that Detroit Become Human is too obvious with its analogy for the civil rights. I think Detroit Become Human has a lot of writing issues here and there with some of its characters, but I will get into that in a second. I'm trying to stay on track. So when it comes to the civil rights and it comes to looking at history and a lot of injustices, racial injustices, prejudice issues, and things like that, systematic racism, the thing about it is that it was obvious. That's what makes it so scary and that's what makes it such a lesson to be learned in history is that society decided that the status quo or the norm or what is morally correct is to mistreat someone, specifically black people, but also other uh, cultures and races as well, because of the color of their skin, because they look different, because they talk different, because they have a different culture, whatever. That's the point. The game itself, even depending on how you play the game and which outcome you end up with, because the game is set up so that every choice you make for certain things can have like four or a thousand different outcomes. Uh, some outcomes even talk about the Holocaust or an analogy to it. And the thing with the Holocaust, just like civil rights, is that it was so obvious, but people were afraid or people didn't realize what was happening to them because the news or politicians or whoever manipulated the truth. They manipulated morals. They manipulated what was right or wrong to do. Well, you see, they're not really people at all. It is a farm, isn't it? Yes. All you need to know about my work here, Bruno, is that it's very important to our country and to you. We're working very hard to make this world a better place for you to grow up in. And anybody that spoke out against it turned into the enemy. So that's the point of Detroit Become Human. Like, I agree that maybe the analogy didn't have to fully be spot on. Maybe Marcus didn't have to be the android messiah slash MLK, sure. But the point of people like MLK or all the Jewish people that were able to flee the Holocaust or even German people who helped hide Jewish people. I could have become one more person and I didn't. <laughs> All of that, the reason why they're so special is because I think we as people think that evil or prejudice or the abuse of the status quo is going to be either more subtle or more obvious. And even when it is obvious, depending on how the society was groomed, right, and brainwashed, will depend on how obvious the truth and how obvious despicable actions of prejudice convict people. That's the point is that something could be so obvious, but when it's wrapped in fear, when it's wrapped in false truth, 
right? False statistics. It's not so easy for people to just be like, hey, this is wrong. If anything, I found myself when watching PewDiePie, Dylan is in trouble, and Jacksepticeye play Detroit Become Human, I felt myself convicted and really reflecting and asking myself, would I believe in the rights of androids? Would I be afraid of them? Would I want them to be destroyed? Would I treat them as a friend, as a human? You know, these are the questions that video games have the chance to ask and really bring up. Because like I said before, a lot of people look at the Holocaust or the civil rights and they're like, how could something like that happen? How could people not stand up? Well, when you've been raised and your children have been raised and your grandchildren have been raised to believe that this is normal, that this is okay, this is how society functions. Just like younger kids, you know, younger than me who grow up with technology, they don't know what it's like to not grow up with technology. So technology is everything to them and they cling on to it more than they sometimes cling on to their friends or their family members, things like that. When suddenly the government starts doing things that you don't trust or not to be true, you have generations who have been taught to trust the government so to suddenly go against it is psychotic to people. Like that's, this is the point. When you don't have convictions like truth and justice and you just believe what society tells you to believe and therefore you easily get swayed to fear change or to fear truth, this is what happens. You have the civil rights, you have the holocaust, you have Jim Crow and slavery and a lot of other things I could get into but I'm not gonna go down this rabbit hole because I want you to stay with me. Not only this but the same people who complain that this is too obvious are the same people that are claiming that like black lives matter and black people are being shot in the streets every other day and nobody's doing anything about it. Like <laughs> you see the contradictions <laughs> and the hypocrisy. Either black people are being shot in the streets every day and we're being hunted down like animals and nobody's paying attention to it, or maybe Detroit Become Human isn't that obnoxious with its analogy for civil rights and the mistreatment of different people. Just a thought. But anyway, I wanna get to the writing real quick. As a writer, I think my bigger issue is some of the characters. I do think that Marcus, who kind of becomes like this MLK <laughs> messiah android, as Jacksepticeye says. Robot messiah. He does have a very hobo Jesus look about him right now. That he's not fully fleshed out. And the romance he has with this one android is like literally like that. Whoa, 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 whoa. we just became lovers? When they left you for dead in his studio. What the fuck? What the fuck did we just become lovers? Eden Club. What the fuck? North. What are you doing? We just became lovers and you ran off? Can we talk about it? But all aside, he does technically serve his purpose to the story. I think my biggest issue is Kara. And the reason why it's not Kara herself, or even what the writers are trying to do with an android having a motherly love and protection for a little girl, her name's Alice, is beautiful. The problem is that it's revealed Spoilers. that Alice is also an android. She's not a human girl. And I think they missed a very important theme and subtext with having Alice as a android instead of a human little girl because then that shows the importance but also the beauty and the potential of androids and humans getting together. They do this technically with the third android that we follow in the story, uh, Connor. Connor. The android sent by Cyberlife. Who everyone loves to cosplay as. He is like an android detective investigator, first of his kind, I think, or something like that. And he's basically set up with an alcoholic, like grumpy human detective named Hank. It's basically kind of like a buddy cop character development story, and it's very sweet and very funny. Slap him across the face. Yeah. <laughs> Wake up, Lieutenant. Yeah, let's go, bro. It's me, Connor. <laughs> and I think that's a good example of showing like the difficulties that humans and androids would also have trying to get together. But then I still think they should have had Kara protect Alice and Alice is a human little girl and show the positive. Like show an idealistic form and then Connor and Hank is a more complicated realistic form of how androids and humans could possibly get along. <laughs> All 
in all, I still think that Detroit Become Human shows that video games can tell beautiful stories and really get people thinking and self-reflecting about important issues like standing up to the status quo, you know, questioning for yourself what is morale, what does it mean to be human, all of these other things. So um, I'm not going to get any more into that. If you want to know how I feel about everything, politics and otherwise, uh, you can just follow my Instagram or Twitter. Let me know what you guys think about Detroit Become Human. Have you played the game? I'd love to play the game at some point, even though I know all the spoilers. Have you ever watched Jacksepticeye, PewDiePie, Dylan is in Trouble play the game, or even probably Mark Plyer or someone like that? What are your thoughts? Do you think that the analogy for civil rights and overall human decency and prejudices and going up against the status quo, what it means to be human, all those other things are properly presented as an analogy in Detroit Become Human. Do you think they've gone too far? Do you think they've done just enough? Do you think they haven't even done enough? Do you think video games should be even telling stories in the first place? Personally, I think so, but that's just me. That's all I got for you. Uh, good luck everybody with this inauguration or something. I don't know. It's, I don't... I don't know. Bye! Love.